Welcome back, everybody. I think it's safe to say that over the last 11 months, we've all spent more time in our kitchen cooking than ever before. And maybe we're getting a little bit tired of our regular rotation. Our next guest is here to help. Here with cooking hacks and tips on getting more out of our ingredients is chef, TV host, and author of Flavor Bomb, a rogue guide to making everything taste better. I'm talking about Bob Bloomer. Hey. I know for me, this pandemic has changed the way that I cook. I'm curious about you though, because you've been cooking for so long. How has you know COVID changed the way you cook or has it? When the pandemic started and all of a sudden there were lineups in grocery stores and empty shelves, it made me really aware of the fact that we all have to be even more socially responsible than ever before and use mm -hmm. up everything that we buy so that there's mm -hmm. stuff left for everybody else. And the other thing is that, you know, we're into this for almost a complete year now. And sometimes it seems like dinner is the only reward of the day. So you want yes, everything yes, that you make I know. and everything you eat <laughs> to be life affirming. And so even if totally. you're rescuing ingredients, you want to put them together in a way that makes every bite like it could be your last, but it's so delicious. Yeah. You're good at that. Hey, Bob, your book is full of tips and hacks to help us use all the ingredients that we have in the fridge because you know what? Sometimes you follow a recipe. This is in my case. It says like, get one carrot and I don't know, saute it, but you have to buy a whole bunch of carrots. So there are all these leftover vegetables in my fridge. I don't know what to do with them. So give us a hint. What do we do? For sure. Well, let, I'll give you a good example. In my fridge, I have, uh, some leftover vegetables too same situation you know sometimes they're in the back of your fridge they you know this is a tired yeah. half of red bell pepper i rescued from something here um you know we've all got that quarter of an onion that you should never throw mm -hmm. out because you'll find a use for it and uh so here's what i love to do when i have uh, vegetables that are either tired or there's just one of this or one of that so i take them uh this is the cauliflower it's getting you know a little bit brown but it's still good just break everything up or cut it up uh these are brussels sprouts and i might just want to trim them a little bit uh to get the you know the outer the outer leaf off make it as pristine as possible um and i've got some carrots you know this is a little tired but i'm just going to break this up you take all these ingredients my onion and a couple of stray potatoes add a little bit of salt splash of olive oil and we're gonna roast these and we're gonna roast them at a high temperature uh, my vegetables onto the sheet pan just like that into my oven at 450 degrees uh, for almost an hour and you just want to turn them a few times while they're cooking and here's the beautiful thing vegetables have all sorts of natural sugars in them and if you were to steam the vegetables nothing would happen to them but when you roast them at a high temperature they caramelize and oh, after an hour this yes. is what they look like and just look at how gloriously brown and caramelized that little piece of cauliflower is and these are like amazingly sweet little nuggets wow. so here i've got all my vegetables uh, sometimes i'm just going to make a really quick dinner so i'll take my vegetables uh take a poached egg oh, my poached egg on yes. top and Look at this. Just get that, that beautiful oh, egg yolk over those vegetables. Yes. Such a super, super simple dinner. But uh, each one of these vegetables is like a beautiful candy nugget, you know, and it's got its own flavors. An easy peasy weeknight meal using up all those things in your fridge. There's one other thing you can do, and that is just take a tetra pack of uh, chicken or vegetable stock, take the vegetables, put them in a pot, simmer them for about a half an hour toss them into a blender like this and uh then you've got a glorious and this is the exact oh. same dish you know the exact same ingredients but a roasted vegetable soup oh wow what a great idea well bob i think it's safe to say that we're both starving uh right now and we're also really excited <laughs> because we're gonna join you now you're gonna put us to work and you're gonna show us how to make a pesto using kitchen scraps you know you go to the grocery store or a farmer's market and you come back and you've bought all sorts of lovely greens mm -hmm. um 
Maybe you bought some fennel and it has these gorgeous fronds on it. Whoa. Um, yes. You, you might have some beet tops. You could have uh, mm -hmm. bought some radishes and you have some glorious radish tops. We're going to make a pesto and we're going to use all these greens in place of the basil. And then we're going to use a lot of other uh, ingredients that we'll rescue from our kitchen. So we're really making a zero waste pesto. And then I'll show you a couple things to do with it. So we're just going to add all the tops of all the greens that you have there, okay? Okay. Okay. Next thing in a pesto, we normally put in pine nuts, but pine nuts are expensive. And honestly, yeah. how many people have pine nuts laying around in their kitchen? Um, so when we blend that all up, we're essentially just grinding up the nuts. I have a little bit of uh, leftover almond butter, just that I was going to throw this jar away, but I'm going to oh, see me what too, I've got. Me too. If you have any, if you have any nuts of any kind, you know, the small half a handful of nuts in a package, you can use okay. that. Okay, now let's talk about garlic. So there's two kinds of garlic cloves that we throw away, either the sprouted cloves, as they're starting to get those little green tops like this one, or sometimes those little teeny weeny little cloves yeah. that are in the center of the garlic that we're just too lazy to grind up, or <laughs> not to grind up, too lazy to peel and then grind up. So we often throw them away. Uh, so I'm gonna add some of those. Cheese, this is a great time. You know, everybody has little bits of cheese in their refrigerator, just these mm -hmm. sad little ends getting a little bit crusty, but nonetheless, they're still good. And especially since we're gonna throw them in the food processor, they are going to uh, they'll grind up and uh, just become incorporated with the rest of the pesto. So um, cool. you can grate these okay. or you can just rough chop them. I'm excited nice about the flavor pesto. of this pesto, the scrap pesto. Traditionally in pesto, you use olive oil. But there are so many kinds of oil that we have around our kitchen that we tend to throw out. You don't think about it, but uh, artichokes packed in oil. Here I have some sun-dried tomatoes that are packed in oil. And, you know, it's kind of just habitual that you take out all the sun-dried tomatoes and then there's a little bit of oil in the bottom and you throw the jar out. But this oil is fantastic. You can use this in pesto. You can use it in uh, on bruschetta. You could use it in a salad dressing. Never Should throw I dump the whole oil. thing in there? Why not? Ladies, are you ready to start your engines? And three, okay. yes. two, one. Ah! <laughs> Lainey, are you almost done there? I think so. You, I, I'm eating this with a spoon. It tastes so oh, yeah. good, Bob. You're gonna give us two dishes we can make using this pesto, and you're gonna walk me through how to do a pizza. This is a garlic naan Ooh, nice. that I bought. I cooked one side, and, um, and now I'm going to, uh, we're gonna build our pizza. So start by spreading the pesto across the top of the crusty side. This is, you know, okay. pizza is yet another great way to use up ingredients that you have in your fridge. Any other things you wanna to add to it? And then take some cheese, some grated cheese. Okay. Put it on top and uh, transfer your pizza, your assembled pizza back to your pan over a medium low heat because you don't want to burn the bottom, but you want to cover it with a lid, a nice tight lid so that the cheese melts, the bottom gets nice and crispy and the whole pizza just becomes a glorious 10 minute dinner. How you doing there, Jess? I'm good, I got the pizza in the pan. I don't have a lid for this, but I always use a cookie sheet. It's my own little hack. That's a fantastic hack. All right, Lainey. Yes. Lady, have you got, um, did you boil up some pasta? I did. I did. I, there's pasta that's been pre-boiled and my pesto okay. is ready. Okay. So let's take a little bit of that pesto and All put right. it in, uh, in the pan, right? Now let's uh, got it. use a slotted spoon to uh, dump some of the pasta into the yeah. pan. Okay. And then I, I, I want you to transfer some of the water, that thick starchy pasta water, and add that okay. to the pan, maybe in increments of a couple of tablespoons so that you can thin out the pesto and create a sauce with it. Right now it's like a nice Got thick it. pesto, which is beautiful. Um, does that look good enough to eat? Yes. Then your work is done. Let's grab ourselves a, a pasta bowl. Yep, got one here. Oh, wow. Very nice. I'm just going to take a, a little extra parm here. Oh, Lainey, I can't wait to see. Go. It's so good. 
Let's see pizza a la Jess Allen. Oh my gosh. How we doing, Jesse? <laughs> we got a zero waste winner on our hands here. Nice to Jess. Bob, you're a winner, and thank you so much for showing us all of these hacks and tips. If you would like to know more, check out Bob's book, Flavor Bomb, A Rogue Guide to Making Everything Taste Better. We'll be right back.